Welcome into this Hoosier Sports Night Update. I'm Mary Deneen. Well, it's officially time to look towards next season for Indiana basketball. The 08-09 campaign came to an end over break with the 66-51 loss to Penn State in the Big Ten Tournament. A big part of next season's success will be top 10 recruiting class signed by Tom Crean, which includes Bloomington native Jordan Halls. Halls and his Bloomington South Panthers look to finish a perfect season in the 4A state championship game last weekend. Alexis Hosier has more from Conseco Fieldhouse. Bloomington South senior guard Jordan Halls led his team to their first class 4A state title in 90 years. Uh, I mean, you couldn't do it any better any other way uh, your senior year. It's an unexplainable feeling and uh, it's what I've been working for this whole year and uh, wanting our, this team to get to that point and that's what we got. Halls will play at Indiana University next season and couldn't help but notice one special fan in the crowd. Coach Green was in the house tonight and uh, glad he got to come and watch. Um, I, I'm very excited now that South's over. Um, great way into my career, but I'm looking forward to IU. Coach Crean did not rattle the nerves of Halls as he scored 14 points for the Panthers. I had confidence in our players, and uh, Coach Crean's been to a lot of our games anyway, so I, I have to get used to him being there, I guess. <laughs> Halls looks forward to suiting up in the Cream and Crimson next season. It's going to be awesome. I can't wait. Uh, I start summer school right after, two weeks after school gets out, so I'm ready. I'm ready. From Conseco Fieldhouse, Alexis Hosier, Hoosier Sports Night. Thanks, Alexis. In other Indiana basketball news, freshman guard Malik Story announced that he will continue his college basketball career somewhere else. Story, who's from California, cited a wish to play closer to home as the main factor in the decision. He averaged 5.9 points and 2.3 rebounds in 31 contests with the Hoosiers. Well, the Indiana football team got back to work last week with the beginning of spring practice. Expected changes for the next year include naming Ben Chappell the starting quarterback while moving Kellen Lewis to wide receiver. Here's Ronan O'Shea with more from The Rock. Certainly the most notable position change with Indiana through spring football practice is quarterback Kellen Lewis moving to wide out. And over the next few weeks, we'll keep you updated on his progress, but the early prognosis is good. I think his attitude's been really good. Um, and I think that he's, he's worked hard uh, and he has uh, his attitude's been good about the adjustment going to wide receiver. And, and really, you know, it's you know been talked a lot about and will be more uh, if we continue it out there. But, but uh, you know, from when I first talked to him right after the season, I mean, he's been very positive about this and in a lot of ways, you know, got excited. And I think uh, him, I think it has a great chance of working because of his attitude and how he's handled it. And I'm sure that his teammates have seen that as well. Now Kellen moves to wide receiver despite the fact that he's among the best quarterbacks in Indiana football history. Having amassed more than 8,000 yards, he also sits atop IU's career list with 48 touchdown passes. But after a 3-9 and nine season, he noted that changes needed to be made. Thanks, Ronan. The Indiana baseball team came into the season with high expectations. However, the Hoosiers got off to a rough start, going 7-14 and in non-conference play. They looked to turn it around last weekend by opening conference play against Minnesota. Nick LaGrange and Kate Senny have more. The Indiana baseball team opened up Big Ten play today against Minnesota. It was a game that saw struggling pitching and little offense. Two bright spots on the team today were Kip Schutz, who was 2 for 4 with one run, and Evan Crawford, who was 1 for 4 with two runs. The 12 to 5 loss drops the Hoosiers to 0 and 1 to begin conference play. After the game, manager Tracy Smith and starting catcher Josh Fagley had this to say about the struggling pitching of Blake Monar. Well, I mean, you think about that inning, they scored six. I mean, I don't think they hit a ball 100 feet, did they? I mean, it was, it was crazy. Um, so he was throwing, I thought, you know, quality stuff even up to that point. And, but he had, because the inning was so long and dragged on, he got his pitch count up. And, you know, we got a lot of baseball left to play, so we're not going to extend him. And, but the thing he has to take away from today is to eliminate the free, the free stuff. You know, and those flu kits, those things are going to happen. I think everybody realized that's been around this game. Yeah, that, that inning was strange, uh, you know, making good pitches, getting guys out. But uh, it seemed like everything, you know, he jammed someone to hit it off the end and it just fall somewhere where we weren't at. So, um, you know, we just got to learn to battle through those innings. I mean, he, I think he still uh, had a pretty positive outing. From Sunbauer Field, I'm Nick LaGrange. Who's your sports night? After losing seven of their last eight, the Indiana baseball team was looking for a big win against the Minnesota Gophers. Freshman Blake Monar took the mound in this season's Big Ten opener in hopes of his third win. 
After only giving up one run through three innings, Munar gave up six earned in the fourth during an inning filled with walks and errors. There in the fourth or whatever it was, it was just, I was kind of pitching around, not really pitching to contact, which has made me successful in the past and kind of going away from what's made me successful and kind of walked a few guys and then that makes the airs and the bloopers hurt you that much more. So. Yeah, I mean, he was off, you know, and I, I don't, you know, whether you attribute that, is he a freshman, is he not, or whatever, he was just off. I mean, that, that was not a Monar performance, and, and we know that, and he knows that, and, and he'll bounce back from that, and and uh, he's a pretty tough guy to hit, and he just had a lot, he gave a lot of free base runners today, and I don't care who you are, or, you know, it's going to be tough to, to beat people that way, but he'll get better. Monar finished the game with six innings pitched, ten hits, five strikeouts, and seven earned runs. From Zimbauer Field, I'm Kate Senny, Hoosiers Sports Night. The Hoosiers went on to win game two of the series by a score of three to two. Freshman Alex Dickerson hit a go-ahead two-run homer in the bottom of the sixth to seal the victory. Game three of the series ended up being canceled due to inclement weather. Well, finally, Little 500 qualifications took place last weekend as teams look to solidify their spot in the upcoming race. On the men's side, 33 teams took to the track, with Phi Delta Theta taking the pole position. Teeter led the way in the women's qualifying, claiming their third straight pole. The women's race will take place on April 24th, with the men's on the 25th. That's all we have on this edition of Hoosier Sports Night. Be on the lookout for another episode next week as we continue our spring practice coverage and begin to preview the Little 500. I'm Mary Deneen. Have a great night.